I want to do a, a training session uh, tonight on spiritual warfare, or particularly on deliverance ministry, okay? And uh, to start off with, uh, I want we're going to show a video. Uh, Sarah's going to put on a video of a guy, Thomas, who was delivered last week. Um, it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Okay? It's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. Deliverance and healing comes by the Holy Spirit. And uh, I think uh, I think this is something that people involved in deliverance, many people need to learn that uh, they get in the way, they, they see deliverance and healing is in the spiritual realm. Healing and deliverance in the name of Jesus is in the spiritual realm. And so people see demons manifesting and things happen and then it's like they try to battle them, but they're doing it in the physical realm. And uh, so... I want to show a video of Deliverance from last weekend, and it has a few principles uh, that I want to talk about. One is loving the person who's demonized, okay? The second is not allowing the demon to uh, become violent and aggressive um, and take over, all right, and how to deal with that. And... Um, just the love of God. And afterwards, you just see how this guy was so loved by the Lord. So let's watch the video. coming out of you. It's coming out. It's coming out. Open your mouth. It's coming out. Breathe it out. It's coming out. Loose your hold and get out. Loose your hold and come out. I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to you. Come out. I take you under the authority of the name of Jesus. I take you under the authority of Jesus' name. I command you out, 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 out. Come on, out. In Jesus' mighty name, out, out. This evil spirit's it's like it's captivated by the Holy Spirit. It's, it's bound by the Holy Spirit. It's being forced out by the Spirit of God. Loose your hold. where you are, you, you settle down. You know where you are. You're in the house of freedom. Now you settle down. Come out. Settle down and come out. You're in the house of freedom. You settle down and you come out in the name of Jesus Christ. Come out in Jesus' name. Stop your yelling and come out. Ah. 
In Jesus' name. There you go. There you go. I believe you're free, sir. You're free. You're free. What's your name? Thomas. Come on, Thomas. Come. What do you feel happened, Thomas? <laughs> oh, mate. <sighs> Free Thomas. God bless you. Someone say praise the Lord. Now, Thomas, there are people that you've hurt, family members, go and say sorry, okay? Yes. You know what I'm talking about? Definitely. Okay. What's that? Definitely. Bless you. you. What'd you feel happen? Not good. My throat hurts. But yeah, there's a lot of unforgiveness. You forgive and you ask for forgiveness. Okay? God loves you, Tom. How are you feeling after yesterday? Peaceful. So tell us um, how these demons affected you. For the last two weeks, I struggled with uh, deep depression and I felt like that... No matter where I find my answers from, I I just couldn't feel fulfilled, I guess. And that all went away when Jesus came and healed me last night. So tell us a little bit more about how that's affecting you the last two weeks. Visits from my past... Um, thoughts, memories of people that I hurt. Um, I've even seen them physically around me and every negative thought in the world that just came straight back at me. But when I, Jesus delivered me last night, all of them. So what, what happened when he delivered you? Well, I can't remember much. Um, it was really intense, but I felt at rest again. And I haven't felt that in a very long time. So how are you today? Wrecked. In a good way. <laughs> Michael's going to give you a hug, bro. What's your, what's your name? Thomas. Thomas, what's your advice to someone who's struggling with demons and mental stuff and memories and depression, a depression that's like killing them? It's not you. It's the enemy. They're just throwing lies at you. But put your hope in God, put your trust, and he'll set you free. Like he did to me. Hey, you remember how you don't remember anything that happened last night? Your eyes rolled back on your head and you were about to get violent. You, were, you practically smashed the floor. You grabbed your chair. Did you know that? <laughs> I wouldn't do that. <laughs> there was someone else, huh? Yeah. Well, Jesus set you free. He's stronger than any strong man. Yes, he is. Praise God. God bless you, bro. You know, this is the reward that we receive for traveling all around the world to see a changed life and someone delivered. Amen. God bless you. Go and serve the Lord. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. So in deliverance ministry, 
You want to go deeper in the anointing. You want to go deeper in Christ. You submit yourself totally, absolute obedience to Jesus Christ, and it's his anointing that delivers people. We read in 2 Corinthians 10.4, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but are mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In spiritual warfare, in deliverance, we have mighty weapons. <clears throat> Often when I, I, I see prayer, prayer helpers, you know, when someone starts to get um, aggressive or violent or begin screaming. I, you know, the people start yelling at the demon and, um, that, you know, and they gather around, start yelling, and then the person becomes more and more hyped up. And um, it's a bit like when you get a demonized person who's full of anger and he starts yelling at someone and the other person reacts back, starts yelling back, and then it gets worse and worse. And that's how, what the demons do. So um, you, you need to command the spirits to settle down. And when we talk about binding spirits, um, binding spirits is, is really about commanding them what to do. So you, you command the spirit to leave. Uh, you command them to do this, to stop doing that. It, it's, a f it's your words that are hindering their will from what they want to do. Healing and deliverance is provided for by the blood of Jesus Christ. When Jesus Christ shed his blood on the cross, he provided for our healing and for our deliverance. This is your inheritance all those who believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, through the blood of Jesus Christ, you can be healed and delivered. And God in his mercy will even heal and deliver someone who's not a Christian. Matthew 8, 16, When evening had come, they brought to him, to Jesus, many who were demon-possessed. And he cast out the spirits with a word, and he healed all who were sick. So healing and deliverance, they go together. And many people are sick, many people are sick because they're afflicted by demons, by spirits of sickness or, or demons that are doing whatever they're doing. So he healed all who were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by Isaiah the prophet, saying, he himself took our infirmities and bore our sicknesses. Amen. When Jesus came, he preached that the kingdom of heaven was present. Deliverance is a sign that the kingdom of heaven is present among us. Hallelujah. Jesus said, uh, go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. This is Matthew 10, uh, about verse 7. And as you go, preach, saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, Cast out demons, freely you have received, freely give. When the kingdom of heaven is present, uh, people get healed, the dead are raised, and demons are cast out, people repent of their sins and come to Christ. Amen. So the work of the kingdom of heaven is, um, is linked to the work of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus said in Matthew 12, 28, If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Hallelujah. When the kingdom of heaven comes, the Holy Spirit is moving and working among us. Praise God. When, when uh, you know, Jesus spoke about binding the strong man, and I just want to take a moment to talk about that because um, sometimes people, um, they get into a, a methodology uh, which is something of the mind uh, and they'll tell demons, I'm binding you, you're bound with chains and so on. Um, the way that we deal with demons is 
we deal with them under the unction of the Holy Spirit, speaking the words that God gives us rather than using some concept in your mind. So the primary way that we bind the activity of demons is we speak to them and our words restrict them and stop them from doing what they want to do. So um, to, to tell demons that they're chained or whatever without seeing it happen in the spirit, without divine discernment um, is probably not very effective because whatever you do without the unction of the Holy Spirit, without the direction of the Holy Spirit, without, without that guidance from above um, is, is walk, walking in the flesh. So in Mark 1.32, it says, uh, verse 34, that Jesus healed many who were sick with various diseases. He cast out many demons and he did not allow the demons to speak because they knew him. That's a form of binding them. He would tell them, do not speak. And they were bound from speaking. They were just, they were muted. Hallelujah. So um, we, we bind and loose and that primarily happens through voice, through speaking. Whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. And it's under the unction, the direction of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. You know, uh, uh, this is a bit of a training video. Um, I hope it, it's helpful. People who are demonized like, like Thomas in the video we saw, they need hope. They need hope. And they go to psychiatrists or psychologists and, you know, they may not get any hope. So, you know, we, we hear of people who are told that you'll, you'll probably be like this all your life. You could be like this for years. But when we read the Bible, we find that God has given us promises that you can be healed and you can be delivered. There is hope in Jesus. Psalm 32 verse 7, you... God are my hiding place. You will protect me from trouble and surround me with songs of deliverance. Psalm 34 verse 4, I sought the Lord and he answered me and he delivered me from all my fears. Psalm 13 verse 2, Psalm 103 verse 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, who heals all your diseases who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good, with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. So when you're either you know, sick or you're both sick and demonized, put your faith in Jesus Christ. If you're ministering to people, if you're praying for people who are sick and demonized, put your faith in Jesus Christ. And by the way, we never blame people. We never tell people, you know, it's your fault that you're sick. Um, we love people and we believe on their behalf. Remember the story in Mark chapter 2 of the paralytic man? He was brought by his friends. We know two things about the paralytic. He couldn't walk and he was a sinner. It, Jesus never mentioned his faith, but Jesus looked up they had made a hole in the roof. They'd lowered him down. He looked up and it says he saw their faith. And he said to the, to the paralytic, my son, your sins are forgiven. So when we're praying for people, believe and do not doubt and you must persevere. Be stubborn in the Lord. So we read in Matthew 15, 21. Because some people, they, they emphasize the anointing. Um, that the anointing delivers people, but they, that there is, a there is a part to play, we have a part to play to believe in our heart that God is delivering us or delivering other people. So in Matthew 15, verse 22, a woman of Canaan ca comes to him and says, cries out to Jesus, have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. And um, 
And then in verse 27, she says, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall under their master's table. She's Because uh, Jesus has said it's not good to throw the uh, the bread to to the puppies. And, and he said, Oh, woman, great is your faith. Let it be to you as you desire. And her daughter was healed. She was severely demonized. It says she was healed from that very hour. So uh, put your faith in Jesus Christ. There are lots of promises, Psalm 91, of God's protection, of God's deliverance. And at the same time, faith resists the enemy. People who are demonized, normally they have a lot of negative thoughts, unbelieving thoughts, uh, tormented in the mind, lies from Satan that they're not loved, that they'll always be like this, that they should commit suicide. This is why if you've got a demonic problem, you need to take the word of God and medicate your mind with it and believe the truth and not the lies. Amen. So, uh, so faith has a part to play in healing and deliverance. The anointing, but also faith. You know, your faith places an obligation on the anointing. You have a part to play. You know, the disciples couldn't cast out a spirit out of a boy, and uh, Jesus, and they said, why couldn't we cast it out? And Jesus says, because of your unbelief. So this is deliverance, but and they were carrying the anointing to raise the dead, but with this particular case... They could not do it because of their unbelief. Why were the disciples unbelieving? Well, possibly they were looking at the problem. This boy, the demon would throw him into the fire. Maybe he was scarred with burns. Um, maybe he was manifesting, epileptic, you know. And uh, when you look at the problem, you can believe the problem. And that's where unbelief can come in. If I say to you, Jesus said, if you have faith as, must, as a mustard seed, you will say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move and nothing will be impossible for you. However, this kind, type of demon, does not go out except by prayer and fasting. So uh, God gives us a strategy uh, in every situation. Praise God. Praise God. So some of you are struggling, you know, and you and you, you give up, you, you, you know, like what's the point? Take the word of God, take the promises of God, never, never give up. Praise God. Hallelujah. So it's it's not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. And the spirit of God works with your faith and faith is in the heart. And faith is in the word of God and the name of Jesus Christ. So demons, they often are very intimidating. You know, the demon will say, I'm Satan, I'm a legion. You know, who are you? Um, they'll start screaming, getting violent and carrying on. You know, let me tell you something. Demons are powerless in the face of Christ. They are absolutely powerless powerless in the face of Christ. And if you are in Christ, you have authority and power in him. Praise God. So uh, don't let them intimidate you. In uh, Mark 3.14, Jesus appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. So we need faith and we need the power of Jesus Christ, the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and the power of the Holy Spirit flows as we surrender ourselves to him. Did you know something? Consecration, consecration is the key to walking in the Spirit. A break in your consecration in holiness of living is a break in your walk in the Spirit of God. So 
if you want to be involved in healing and deliverance and so on, it's not about being in the spirit at the moment. It's about walking in the spirit. So it's being consecrated to him. And demons use the things of the world. And you are in the world, but you're not of the world. So you must be consecrated to him. Praise God. You have to walk in the light as he is in the light. And the thing about deliverance, demons are very deceptive. And if you are walking in darkness, if you have unconfessed sin, resentment, or you think that certain uh, sexual expressions, let's call them that, are okay when the Bible says they're not, that will lead you into spiritual blindness so that you cannot cast out spirits because you're blind. It takes light to cast them out, and light shines through consecrated vessels. Amen? And, you know, uh, deliverance and healing, it's not about you. It's, it's all for the glory of Jesus Christ. So if, if you're thinking, well, you know, I, I want to see signs and wonders and all this sort of thing, you know, why do you want to see it? Why do you want to see it? Do, is, is your goal the glory of Jesus Christ? Because the Holy Spirit comes to honour the name of Jesus. He doesn't come to honour your name, but to lift up the name of Jesus. So what are you on about? So when Jesus was talking with the man who, the demoniac, who had uh, 12,000 demons, a legion of demons, um, he says to him, go home to your friends and tell them what great things the Lord has done for you and how he has had compassion on you. Hallelujah. We heard the testimonies tonight. So many people feeling the love of God. That's the compassion of Jesus. You know, it's because of God. Because God loves you so much that he sets you free. He heals you. Go and tell other people about it. It's not for you. It's for the world to know. Amen. So very quickly, um, how demons operate. They cause sickness, um, depression, torment, voices, family and relationship breakdown. We, we uh, heard that one tonight of, uh, was it Lena? Uh, one of the ladies, one of the ladies who had terrible marriage for twenty something years, she got delivered in one of the meetings, and her husband must have got delivered too because they're having a beautiful marriage. They cause family and relationship breakdowns. Some of you got bad relationships, and you don't understand it's demons that are causing it. Cause disunity. You need to fight the enemy and not your partner, not your husband, not your wife. Demons cause hindrance. Demons cause accidents, temptation. So uh, one of the primary strategies of the enemy of Satan and demons is to bring you down from your position in Christ. And they do that simply by getting you to sin. And it's called temptation. So demons and the, the kingdom of darkness, they work on your flesh. On the, on, on the flesh. That's why it's called the works of the flesh. What are the works of the flesh? Outbursts of anger, uh, revelry, party spirit, um, any type of sex outside of marriage, por pornography, uh, the occult, witchcraft. These are all works of the flesh which the enemy is working in. And the enemy will appeal to your flesh to do things. That's how he works. And then when he gets you when he when he's got you, you fall into sin, he puts you into a demonic snare and you're like a prodigal son. It's consecration, self-discipline, self-control by God's grace that enables us to walk in the beauty of holiness. Hallelujah. It's a walk it's a walk of grace. It's not something you can do, but it's a walk of grace. You have your part and God has his part. Your part is to repent, to believe, and to obey the word of God. God's part is to give you the grace to do it. Hallelujah. 
Praise God. Demons are described in the New Testament as unclean spirits. Wherever there's unclean stuff going on, you can be sure that there's an unclean spirit behind it. Uh, when people are demonized, sometimes they lose control, they're driven by these things. They, they, demons can, they come and go in people's lives. You've got to understand this. You know, someone who's demonized, um, you think, oh, they, they have this evil spirit all the time. But uh, that may be so, but often the demons, they have a connection to the person and they'll leave for a time and they come back. That's why you'll see people, they go into demonic states and they lose their mind. Sometimes they get put into a psych, psych ward um, and then they'll, they'll be in their right mind for a while and then they'll go back into it. So there's an affliction there. person's demonized. A person who is demonized, often they believe deception and they easily believe lies. And they, even though the facts can be in front of their face, they'll still believe it. And when they get delivered, they go, well, what did I believe that for? Or, you know, it's all gone. Praise God. Um, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. A demonized person uh, can be susceptible to things like conspiracy theories, paranoia, anxiety, fear about the future. And so you, you hear these, you know, conspiracy theories, this is going to happen, and someone who's afflicted with fear, with paranoia, with anxiety, they easily enter into these types of theories because they, they bring depression and misery into people's lives. Praise God. Be careful what you listen to. This is a good book. Listen to it. Hallelujah. Praise God. Don't provoke the Holy Spirit by walking in darkness. You know, you go, well, you know, it's, it's okay to watch this movie, you know, horror sh shows. It's okay to to um, have my palms read, it's okay to sleep with someone, we'll get married eventually, you know. Don't provoke the Holy Spirit to jealousy. Dangerous. 1 Corinthians 10.20, Rather that the things which a Gentile sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. So the Corinthians were in danger of participating in demonic activity. I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. Or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? Are we stronger than he? You know, some of you think, oh, it's okay, it's okay. I'll sit down and, and watch this garbage on TV and, uh, and grieve the Holy Spirit. It's a dangerous thing, a dangerous thing. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. And one thing I want to say about uh, it's a very common temptation that the enemy uses. He uses circumstances and people to tempt you. For example, um, in many countries there's poverty, there's uh, lack of food, there's scarcity. Um, I used to live in a third world country in Paraguay and uh, real deprivation, poverty. When I was in Bolivia, I saw poverty that was unbelievable. And when people are afflicted with poverty, there comes the temptation to steal, to do, to do the wrong thing, to, to, to get more in their life. It's, uh, it's a temptation of the enemy. Um, when people are sick, they're, they're tempted, oh, you know, God doesn't love me, he's not listening to my prayers and so on. It's a temptation. Satan uses circumstances to tempt people. And he uses people. People will provoke you. People will... Um, will slander you, gossip you, gossip against you, do things behind your back, rub you up the wrong way, you know, and we are to walk with patience and love 
and the character and the, of Christ and the fruit of the Holy Spirit towards people. Maybe the enemy has sent that person to make you angry, to do the wrong thing. And God's called us to walk in the spirit of gentleness, love and peace towards other people. Praise God. And, you know, the Lord will allow the enemy to send people because it's part of his way of character reformation in your life, of building character, you know. Praise God. Hallelujah.